On September 3rd, history was made in orbit. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft fired up its brand new propulsion system and, for the very first time, did something that had always been Russia's job. It reboosted the International Space Station on its own. Now, sure, this is a major step toward U.S. independence from Russia in tasks involved with the ISS. But if you look deeper, this breakthrough sends a far bigger message. It hints at a potential game-changer in the escalating space race between the United States and China. At a time when headlines keep warning that America risks falling behind, Dragon's success shines like a beacon of hope, and maybe even a turning point. So, what exactly happened? Why does it matter? And how could it reshape the future of global space power? Stick around because in today's TechMap episode, we're breaking it all down. On Wednesday, September 3rd, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft captured global attention as its brand new propulsion system successfully demonstrated, for the very first time, its ability to help the International Space Station maintain its orbit around Earth. The ISS periodically requires these boosts because trace amounts of air in the upper atmosphere gradually slow it down. Without such pushes, the station would slowly descend closer to Earth. Until now, this critical job had been almost exclusively handled by Russia's progress vehicles and the station's built-in thrusters. That's why Dragon's successful reboost marks a major milestone, signaling greater U.S. independence in a task long dominated by Russian spacecraft. To pull this off, Dragon has been outfitted with an advanced boost kit that includes two powerful Draco engines containing an independent propellant system along with heaters and insulation, all carefully tucked into the spacecraft's trunk. The upgrade gives Dragon 1.5 times more thrust than a Russian Progress vehicle, and that power was on full display during its latest test, a burn lasting just over five minutes that lifted the station's orbit by about one mile. This achievement has boosted NASA's confidence to schedule Dragon for multiple reboosts throughout fall 2025. By then, Dragon is expected to take on the majority of the ISS's orbital maintenance while docked, a huge leap beyond the limited one or two burn routine offered by Progress. NASA specifically assigned SpaceX this role as part of a broader, long-term vision for the future of the station. The data gathered from Dragon's orbital boosts will directly support the design of the U.S. deorbit vehicle, an advanced evolution of Dragon's platform. This future spacecraft will ultimately be responsible for ensuring the safe and controlled re-entry of the ISS when its mission in low Earth orbit concludes, likely around 2030 or 2031. The uncrewed Dragon spacecraft used for this mission was C-211, which launched on August 24 as part of the CRS-33 cargo resupply flight to the ISS. It will remain docked with the station until around December or January before returning to Earth with valuable science samples and cargo. Although this marks the first trial of Dragon's upgraded propulsion system, it's not the first time a Dragon has attempted a reboost. During the CRS-31 mission last November, another cargo Dragon, C-208, ignited its capsule-mounted Draco thrusters for a 12.5-minute burn. That maneuver slightly adjusted the station's orbit, raising it by about 0.11 kilometers at the highest point and 1.1 kilometers at the lowest. Typically, those Draco thrusters are meant for maneuvering and attitude control, not for boosting the station itself. While the test was successful, it wasn't an ideal solution since the thrusters weren't designed or positioned for that purpose. Instead, it served as a proof of concept could Dragon actually step up to the task? Dragon's new capability to boost the ISS can be seen as the well-earned reward of SpaceX's years of experience in safely and reliably docking the spacecraft with the station. Since the first cargo mission in 2012, Dragon has been coming to the ISS for over a decade. Each time it docks, Dragon carefully attaches itself to the station 
to deliver food, experiments, and equipment to the astronauts inside. Over time, NASA and SpaceX have learned how to do this docking smoothly and safely many times. Because Dragon is already so good at connecting to the ISS and staying attached for weeks or months, engineers realized they could add special thrusters, small engines, to Dragon that let it push or boost the station's orbit while it's docked. This is a big new step, but it's possible because Dragon's history with docking gave them the skill and confidence to try it. Of course, successfully boosting the ISS's orbit isn't the only major leap for a space docking pro like SpaceX. On September 3rd, Elon Musk revealed that 2026 is shaping up to be a breakthrough year for Starship, with multiple in-orbit refueling tests planned using the upcoming Starship version 3 rocket. The fascinating part? These tests will involve refueling Starship while it's floating in space by docking it with another Starship, a maneuver Musk describes as docking with ourselves. Even more intriguing, he pointed out that this maneuver will actually be a much easier challenge than docking with the ISS, something Dragon has been doing reliably several times a year. Musk's optimism about Starship's ability to fully demonstrate in-orbit refueling technologies by 2026 has solid grounding. During Starship Flight 3 last year, SpaceX successfully transferred around 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen from header tanks to main tanks while in space. This tank-to-tank -tank test validated how fluids behave in microgravity and was considered a NASA-funded success, even though it was conducted within a single vehicle. By August 2025, Starship had completed 10 orbital flights, concentrating on ascent, re-entry, and soft landings. The 10th mission, flown on August 26th, was the first successful flight for the Starship version 2 vehicle. It achieved all major test objectives, culminating in controlled splashdowns of both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship itself. SpaceX plans one more flight with this version before transitioning to version 3 launches from Pad 2. Starship version 3 a major leap from the current version 2 is expected to wrap up production and testing by the end of the year, according to Elon Musk. Its high flight cadence is set to kick off next year. Block 3 comes with significant hardware upgrades, including Raptor 3 engines, enhanced docking ports, quick disconnect systems for propellant transfer, and better insulation to minimize boil off. Together, these improvements allow for longer orbital loiter times, up to three to four weeks, crucial for carrying out complex refueling sequences. However, several challenges still lie ahead. First and foremost is ensuring rocket survivability from launch to landing. This is an essential interim goal that must be achieved before engineers can move on to bigger milestones, like in-orbit refueling. Starship needs to consistently survive both launch and landing to validate the latest improvements to its heat shield. Second is addressing propulsion and fueling issues. Some of this year's Starship setbacks with version 2 were tied to problems in these systems, and in June, another Starship even exploded on the test stand. For in-orbit refueling to work, propulsion and fueling systems must be exceptionally reliable to carry out the complex, precise maneuvers required. Last but certainly not least are rapid reusability and in-orbit refueling. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine highlighted that rapid reuse is critical for orbital refueling because it allows multiple fuel deliveries within a short time frame, avoiding the long waits that would come from building and launching new rockets each time. Fast turnaround drastically reduces costs making spaceflight more affordable and sustainable. Without rapid reusability, refilling spacecraft in orbit would be too slow and prohibitively expensive, ultimately slowing exploration efforts. For SpaceX to achieve this, Starship must return from orbit with its heat shield in excellent condition, ready for another flight. On top of that, the ambitious Mechazilla catch system must work flawlessly for both stages. While SpaceX has already demonstrated the ability to catch the Super Heavy booster, the challenge now is Starship itself. 
Elon Musk has predicted a tower catch for the upper stage within as few as three more flights, marking a major upcoming milestone for the program. As for cryogenic in-space refueling, Bredenstein cautioned that this remains an undeveloped, highly complex technology. In his words, Our complicated architecture requires a dozen or more launches in a short time frame, relies on very challenging technologies that have yet to be developed, like cryogenic in-space refueling, and still needs to be human-rated. In testimony before the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, he warned that although Starship's payload capacity could be revolutionary, its current complexity precludes alacrity, leaving the U.S. at risk of falling behind China. Similar concerns extend to Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark II system, planned for Artemis V. Like Starship, Mark II depends on multiple cryogenic propellant refuelings through its cislunar transporter. While still unproven, successful refueling would open the door to heavier payloads, up to 30 tons in a one-way mission, or 20 tons in a reusable configuration. However, with SpaceX's rapid progress and its mastery of space docking, it's hard not to believe the U.S. is gaining a real edge in the new space race. What do you think? Are we watching America's path to victory unfold? If you agree, drop a one in the comments. Anyway, the absence of a ready lunar lander isn't the only obstacle facing the U.S. in the second lunar space race with China. Jim Bridenstine has underscored the high costs and sustainability problems tied to NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, labeling it extraordinarily expensive. Since its inception in 2011, SLS development has cost around $23 billion, with additional billions poured into Orion and ground systems. Each Block 1 launch comes with a price tag exceeding $2 billion, before even factoring in long-term amortization. Planned Block 2 upgrades push the costs even higher. A key driver of these expenses is the cost-plus contracting model, which often incentivizes delays and overruns. Boeing, one of NASA's primary contractors, has been at the center of many of these issues. As the lead for the SLS core stage and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, ICPS, Boeing has faced heavy criticism for mismanagement, underestimated workloads, workforce challenges, and technical hurdles in both hardware and software. Core stage delays alone added about 2.5 years and $4 billion in extra costs. On top of that, Boeing struggled with supply chain problems, infrastructure setbacks, and even tornado damage at the Michoud assembly facility. Northrop Grumman, tasked with building the solid rocket boosters, also encountered problems, including defects in the booster's propellant liner and insulation. Frequent contract modifications complicated oversight and added administrative burdens for technical issues with new components further delayed progress. Aerojet Rocketdyne, responsible for the RS-25 engine's new controller unit, has also slowed the program. Development ran into faulty memory chips and complex testing requirements, delaying engine certification and pushing back the SLS launch schedule. The rocket's high per launch cost is worsened by its expendable design. Each mission requires a brand new core stage, solid rocket boosters, and RS-25 engines. This approach caps the launch rate at just one to two flights per year, currently estimated at once every 18 to 24 months. Such a limited cadence is unsustainable for NASA's Artemis ambitions, which call for frequent missions to support a lunar base or eventual Mars exploration. 